This is the Anything Goes with Jackson Neal podcast. Welcome back to the podcast here for episode number 134. I'm Jackson Neal, of course. Today's guest is Garen, talking about some of his latest music and other projects he's worked on. But before we jump into that interview, I want to remind everyone this podcast is available on all of your favorite streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, SoundCloud, basically wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to subscribe so you get the new episodes every single Tuesday and Thursday. So this year, Garen has released several singles, some music videos. Uh, he threw an EP in there, The Lost Files. Uh, I talked with him about all of that, uh, just kind of inspiring what his latest, what his latest music would have been inspired by. And then also his contribution to Grammy-nominated albums like Nipsey Hussle's Victory Lap and Dreamville's Revenge of the Dreamers 3, which just got nominated uh, for some Grammys at this upcoming year's awards show. So I talked with him about uh, those things as well, what it was like to work on acclaimed projects like that, and then also what he has planned going forward. He's an artist who has really started to gain some momentum, and he's looking to really capitalize off of that in 2020. So I talked to him about planning for the future and what he has going forward. Overall, it's just a really fun conversation I had with him, and with that said, let's jump right into it. Can you uh, tell me a little bit about your latest uh, single, Energy? Uh, so, Energy is literally about women feeling like they have to be a certain way or give up certain things and morals just to be, you know, within what society feels is normal right now. So my whole point is I'm not going to give you what you're used to, to hearing or seeing, which is, you know what I mean? I'm attracted to your body. I'm attracted to your looks. I just want to smack. I want to smash. I want to get between your legs. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you something that's more like you can feel, appreciate, and value. It's not constant and consistently coming in as you're used to, you know, the feelings that you're used to feeling. And that come, you you, you are more connected with it right now. Because the sad part about it is, I'm more rare than most people, if that makes sense, because mm. most dudes in my situation or in a situation would, you know, go for the score. You know what I mean? I don't I don't want to score every time. Sometimes I just want to have your energy and see what type of person you are, see, see where your morals lie, where your values lie. And, you know, I'm, I'm just a little bit more intricate with with the way I interact with women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see if you can kind of foster, I guess, like a, a more meaningful relationship. Right, just more meaningful. Yeah, that's that's a that's a very basic summary of it. Just energy is just, I want more meaningful things out of you as the woman. Mm-hmm. So another, you, in addition to this um, single, you also released another song, Wake Up, and you had a video for that one. I found that, inter- in, that a video pretty interesting. Can you tell me a little bit about the video for that single? Uh, that video is all, you know, so my whole purpose in life is just to change the world back to normal, which I reinvented the definition of normal. I really don't know what Webster's de- dictionary would tell you it is or none of that stuff. But normal to me is the, the you know, the ability to be aware enough to love yourself. So basically, wake up is just piggybacking off of energy and vice versa. And they both fall under the umbrella of normal, which is, you know, just giving them these tools and these words and this encouragement that they can hold on to because they don't hear it too much because they used to be called sluts and whores and all these different, like, you know, downing names that, that make you feel less value. Um, <clears throat> I try to refrain from all of those things when it comes to, like, my album work and just the music that I want the world to kind of... Um, you know, embrace and the women more so to embrace in that regard. So wake up is just really saying, hey, wake up. You don't have to compete with society deemed as beautiful. You don't have to compete with what Instagram says is beautiful. You don't have to compete with big 
fake booties and fake titties and all that weird stuff that everybody feel like is competition and what makes or breaks beauty today. Mm -hmm. You mentioned there's something about normal, and your last your last project was titled Normal. Can you yeah. kind of tell me a little bit about this this concept you have of of normal? What does normal mean to you? What why do you want to? What's so important to, about normal to you? Um, I just always was in predicaments where I had to make a choice: Do I want to, you know, gang bang, or do I want to be somebody who don't participate in all this negative? energy that's being put out into the world or do do I want to talk down on women or do I want to uplift women you know what I'm saying like just making these normal decisions you know it's not just strictly about women or strictly about the streets it's just every situation I've ever been through I've always had to make a choice whether I want to be the real normal or do I want to be with society doing as normal? Because society tell me to be a gangbanger. Society tell me to call women hoes and sluts and bitches and and all this and, and make ratchet music every day because that's gonna get me on. Society tell me that, you know what I mean? Uh, look at look at this prostitute the wrong way. She a prostitute. Look at her as a as a as a downfall in life or someone who didn't meet the standards of life. But instead, I choose to look at you as somebody who's doing bad for a good cause. You know what I'm saying? You trying to help yourself or you got kids. You you never know what nobody's story is. So normal to me is just really making that that choice of self-love. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's what it means to me. And I like how you described it there, like almost all these like little choices you kind of make, like whether it's like in this this little choice, this little choice, but all those little choices kind of create the bigger choice of how you live your life. Exactly. It, it, it all, you know, like even when people, and maybe you might lose me here, but it, if you just follow me, it'll make perfect sense. Even when people think of success, you know, mm -hmm. people think success is just like, boom, bam, you just went from here to here. But no, it's like these small little successes and successors that, that create this one big feeling in look to the world where it's like, okay, he's now successful, but you, you've been getting these small increments of success along the way. That's how normal it is to me. It's these small little choices that, one day you graduate to a normal human being. You know, mm -hmm. everybody ain't going to be normal. A lot of people don't die normal. A lot of people die replicas. A lot of people die microwavable. You know, normal is of you, you know. Society mm -hmm. normal is, is a microwave. It's like everything is fast. Every choice is made with no regard. Like everything, you, you care less about yourself every time. And, and, and the more you care less about yourself, guess what? You're you're a different type of normal. You're not the normal that I'm talking about. You're the mm -hmm. normal that's that was created. You're the robotic normal, the, the society's normal. So, you know, normal is just a bunch of little choices that add up to one big appreciation from people around you. If you just you know that person who don't want to be a platform of the world, but for somebody like me who's a platform of the world, the world's going to recognize all these small choices I made, and, and they come out in songs, and all you got to do is pay attention, and then you realize, wow, this wow, this, this, this is what I need in my life. You know, I want to hear this ratchet music, and I want to hear this club music, and we can go, we can do all that, but what's real, what you need, is not what you want. So mm -hmm. that's that's what normal is to me, and that's what's, what makes up those small decisions that come to this grandioso, oh, my gosh, he's so, you know, whenever that day comes for me. Yeah, exactly. And, like, it's funny, you mentioned success there. A lot of times people describe, like, overnights. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm an overnight success, but I've been working for 10 years to get to that right. point. You know, right. it's a lot of small steps to get to that point where you finally, you know, break it open. And I like how you, like you kind of, like, reference that whole, like, small decisions you make in life to make up one big choice, I guess, with kind of you as an artist, a lot of a lot of songs to make up who your personality, who your persona as an artist really is. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of different genres of music in my repertoire, in my in my chamber of of uh, tunes, I guess you could say. Um, but I'm very selective on how I release it and what I release and at the time I release it. Like I got some ratchet music. I got all type of music. I'm I'm from the streets. I'm you know what I mean? I'm not of the streets, but I'm from all of this. I I know what's going on. I know what's in right now. I know what the BPM sound like and all that stuff. But 
what I'm trying to do is establish a foundation so you're not thrown off when I do go there. Because if I go there and I get a lot of attention off of talking down on women or not necessarily talking down, but not giving them the value that most people who are core to my following right now are used to hearing, I could just become this dude who all we know you for is that club hit you had. So I'm very meticulous on how, when, what, and where I'm putting music out. You know what I'm saying? Because I know this is going to be traced. And this is just, this is just something that's, you know, it's like a, it's like a trail, basically. Like people are going to co- go back and say, hey, dang, he been talking about this, you know? Mm-hmm. So to yeah. give them more of a reference. It, it, like these are reference records for when God gives me that moment where it's like, okay, I'm the man. Everybody know who I am. Everybody know my music. And then you go back and you say, wow, this is not just somebody who came out of nowhere. This is somebody who's been speaking this whole truth for the longest, you know what I mean? And, and that's what I want to build. So that's why I'm very cautious on how I do stuff and what I do and what I say and when I put it out and the times and platforms, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And and this year I noticed you've, you've released, you know, some singles, obviously, the you know, Energy and Wake Up. But another thing I saw you released was The Lost Files, like kind of like EP, about four tracks. Can you tell me right. a, little bit about, a little bit about that? I was in New York. Uh, I wasn't really super stable out here in L.A. And it was a lot of like street gang activity. And, I, you know, one of my partners got like shot and then. Like, it was just a lot going on out here. And it was this thing called 100 Days, 100 Nights. And it was, like, a lot happening at one time. And I had an opportunity to go to New York. Just, like, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just take a leap of faith and just go to New York. I don't care. I don't really have nothing solid set in stone out there. But I went out there. I recorded a lot of great music. I learned myself as a person. Um, I was working, you know, delivery, biking all over town. To learn the streets i was i was a bar back in 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 a restaurant in a what do you call that a steakhouse i was what was that ricardo steakhouse it's a famous steakhouse in new york i was ricardo steakhouse and grill i was a bar uh, like a bartender type dude and just you know what i mean i was six feet the ceiling was five nine it was just a lot of stuff i was just dealing with it that was a, a very important and beautiful time for me and I can't get those files back because I still had that computer, but it's just dead. It's crashed. It's like, it, it don't work. So I just was like, Hey man, these songs ain't missed mastered nothing. These are like bounced out from the day I bounced them. And I never went back because I didn't have the opportunity. And that's why it's called the lost files. Cause they, they're literally lost. Like on the, on the black, on the back of the cover, my disclaimer is like, these files are really lost. Like you, like, this is, this is it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, that was just a moment of truth. Like, yo, I'm not scared to show people what I was on in 2015. And the records are hard. If I did them over, it would still sound just as good today. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but I, I I saw that backstory to it, and I was like, and I was you know I was listening through your music before the interview, and I saw that backstory, and I was kind of surprised that those were all the way you know from back from back yeah. then. I it yeah. sounded like it kind of fit in with everything yeah. you're still doing now. And that's what it's gonna always be. That 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 was my point. Like. I'm. I know. I'm. I'm very aware of what I'm doing. This is track re- record I'm building. This is. This is a trail that's being, you know, mapped out right now for people who who don't know. And 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 in five ten years, people are gonna be looking back like, oh my gosh, we he was the truth before we knew it, you know. So I'm just. I'm just waiting to meet the opportunity because i'm for sure prepared Mm -hmm. and i think speaking of an opportunity i I saw this that you contributed some background some vocals to uh dreamville's revenge of the dreamers project went platinum so i'm i'm a platinum recording how you doing (laughs) i'm a platinum recording uh artist now because that went how how did how did that come about what was that like oh i just went i just went to atlanta I got a bunch of friends at Dreamville. I went on tour with Kaz, who signed to J. Cole. And we basically um, just, I got there the last three days. So they was there for 14 days, I believe, or 13. Yeah, 13 days. I got there on the 10th day. 
So I didn't expect to make the album. I just more so expected to get, you know, some relationships established, get some energy flowing through my body from all these different successful people and new and up and coming artists that I didn't know, just kind of like build with people. But I ended up making it randomly when I walked out the booth. J. Cole was walking in the room and he was feeling it. He like, yo, I need this record. You know what I'm saying? So that was just God letting me know that he has a hand over my life. And he's definitely in control of this because, you know, somebody, one of my homies paid for half of my ticket to get out there. You know what I mean? I paid to go out there. I, you know what I mean? I flew on like, from, I don't know. Actually, I didn't fly on the black airline. I flew on the cool airline. But it just was a, it was a very, it was very much a struggle to get there, but it paid off. You know what I'm saying? I'm platinum now because I, I you know what I mean? I, I, I held it out and I thugged it out. So that's definitely, that definitely. And that, that's some good place. Um, some right place at the right time right there with, uh, yeah. Saint yeah. J. Cole. Oh, right. He just walked in. I mean, he was literally walking all over the place, but he's such a real dude. Like, I've, I've seen some people like come up to him and try to like even take a picture or some of that nature. And he like, yo, I'm here, bro. Like you don't have to yeah. do that. I'm not going nowhere. I'm, I'm right here. You know what I'm saying? So I just, it, on top of it being right place at the right time, it also was like, I told you being prepared for opportunity because in those sessions, it wasn't like, Hey, what you got to do? It was like, yo, you better figure out how to get in that booth. Nobody's going to ask you. Nobody's going to tell you. Nobody's going to wait for you. And they will close the session right after they done because nobody else forced their their energy and their aroma into that session. So I learned that very fast. And what's crazy is those vocals I did was on the second day I got there. Second day I got there, yep. Yeah. Second day I was there, the I laid those vocals. The third day I already I already knew what to do, and I was like, "Dang, I should have came first ten uh-huh. days because I would have been all over the album if I came the first ten days." Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it's like yeah, being being prepared because like a lot of the times those opportunities come to you, and you just gotta say, you know what, you don't have no idea when that opportunity is gonna come. But you just gotta be prepared to take it as soon as it comes in front of you. That's like the biggest part. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You're not hundred percent. That is absolutely the biggest part. So another album I saw that you were a part of was you were a part of Nipsey Hussle's um, Grammy-nominated album Victory Lap. You're on one of the songs. You provided some vocals on that. How did that come together? Right, um, which which I keep hearing is his biggest song on the on the record. That's what I mean. Like God really is is working in my life. But uh, me and Nipsey knew each other for a long time. Not like super long. I'm 25. I knew him probably like 10, 11 years. So that's a big chunk of my life. Um, but I really knew him probably like seven, eight years. So with that, um, that's just street politics. Just I did go to school in Slauson and Crenshaw, which was his neighborhood. But that's street politics. Like that was totally street politics. Like my big bros went to high school with Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it was. Like it was like they went to middle school, and my other big bro, he, him, him, his grandma and Nipsey grandma lived next door to each other. So it's pictures with him and Nip on their bikes with training wheels. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just street politics when it comes to Nipsey. Like it's it's deeper than rap. Like it took me, I was ditched in school in 12th grade, which was in 2011 and 2012. I was ditching school to go work on the Crenshaw album that I never made. Mm-hmm. But it took me 10 years basically just to get backgrounds on a, on a record, you know? <laughs> so that's how deep me and Nipsey's, uh, I guess, I won't say relationship because I, I can't say it's super deep because Nipsey is the type of dude who has a different type of relationship with damn near every single person, like literally. Mm-hmm. Like, so... I won't say it's like super deep. Like that was my homeboy. We talked all the time. Nah, it wasn't like that. But we knew we we respected each other. We knew each other. We had common grounds. I've been around his wife. I've been around his sister. I went to school with his sister. Um, like it's just deep. You know what I'm saying? Super deep of a connection.
connection and a tie. It's like family ties, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. It's one of those people that you just know, you know, they're yeah, you part of their know. family. Yeah, you're just yeah. so intertwined. Exactly. It ain't like a, it's nothing fake about that situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Another thing I saw is that you have a documentary out right now, which is yeah. getting a lot, a lot of attention. I've seen, you know, from film, from um, the Los Angeles Film Festival, I think it was, you know, winning a winning a category it's called normal a documentary how did that documentary come about uh well that documentary was more so just to bring awareness and kind of let the world know that you know um this is what normal means to me and this is one of my first pieces of personal information that i'm you know putting out to the world outside of the actual record or a track or you know some of that nature is just like hey this is some real this is some real information that i'm giving you guys mm-hmm. so that was that was a documentary to kind of put in the minds and the brains of everybody hey this is what normal means you know this is what it is like if you wondering why i got an ep called normal and I'm going to give you some very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exclusive information. My album is called The New Normal. Yeah. Okay. I ain't announced it yet, but you got it. You know what I mean? Thank you. <laughs> the New Normal is going to be my album. And then if you don't start realizing the pattern, everything about me is, is about normality. You know what I'm saying? So these are the... The, the seeds I'm planting to hopefully grow and live forever. This documentary ain't even out yet and it's getting so much attention. I already won the LA Movie Awards. Uh, I got invited to the St. Louis International Film Festival. And, you know, I I, 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 I inputted the, the doc into a lot of different film festivals. I didn't get so lucky on certain film festivals, but that's okay, you know, because this is what Faith is all about, you know. I ain't even released it yet and it's already getting a lot of so I'm I'm very grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, yeah, I can I can see this whole the whole normality uh, theme kind of playing out. You said with the EP and now this doc, mm-hmm. this documentary and that and that album. Um, so what's it been like working on this on this project? I guess. Uh, to be 100 percent honest, I recorded this album in 2016. Um, when I lived in Atlanta for about four months, literally just to go out there and record it. And now I'm not a part of the independent label that I was with. And we we have such a great relationship. We both was like, yo, this is such great music. Let's still put it out into the world. Like, mm-hmm. that's my big brother. His name J.R. McKee. And my other big bro, his name is Fly from TIG. And Family Ties, uh, J.R. from Family Ties Entertainment. Uh, Fly is from I Think It's a Game. So these are two dope, successful record label execs and owners, black business owners who invested in me, let me go and then still said, yeah, let's put out the great music we came up with. And and th- th- this is normal, you know what I'm saying? Th- this energy is what normal brings. Like, that's a lot of artists that's not fortunate to be in the position I'm in to be able to go through that, get out of it, still release music for all nearly just promo. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. this is the energy that I'm carrying everywhere I go, everywhere I am, because it's being reciprocated back to me. You know, God is showing me blessings in so many different small ways. And then it comes back and then boom, here we are about to release the album that I recorded three years ago. So, you know, I got tons of new music, but I'm still, you know, taking baby steps and laying the foundation. And sometimes you might build a house, start building a house in 2017, but in 2020, that's gonna look crazy. Just like the stadium down the street, the LA Ram Stadium, they started that 2017, but I guarantee 2020 on, it's going to be a lot of people enjoying the fruits of the labor that started three years ago, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's that type of process, it's like trying to build a stadium. It's like, it, it, it's, it's, it's slow, but it's, it's, it's coming. You know what I'm saying? It's coming together. 
Definitely. And it's awesome that you're able to, you know, have this relationship with the people that you were, that music wasn't almost stuck in and not being able to be released. I mean, you know, hear a lot of artists say like they get stuck with their label or this person and they can't release the music. So it's, I'm glad that you're, you're able to do that. Um, right. Now, I just want to look forward for you. I mean, you have this tour starting next month, the top of December. Right. Like a week and a half from now, I'm, I'm on the road. How, how are you feeling going into that? I'm super excited. I mean, I can't complain. I just, you know, it's a job. So for me, every tour I ever did, it, it's been on the road, literally. So I don't have the other experience where you're flying from state to state to state to this to this to this. I drove everywhere, and I'm also a part of driving. You know, I'm also a part of getting my sound together. I'm also part of managing, you know, time management. I, I, I wear so many hats on the road, it's like, the fun part is wearing all the hats, you know, but I know some people just see like when you walk on stage, that's that's what they see. Like, man, he just came from this city. Wow. Next day here in this city. But you don't know, like, OK, as soon as I get off stage, I got to rush to the room, kind of try to get like three, four hours of sleep because at 2 a.m. I got to be up on the road because the next city is 17 hours away. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's, it's a hard life. People don't realize yeah, that. It's, yeah, it, it's not as smooth as people think, you know what I mean? It's not really time. Like, at this level, it's not time to go to parties, and, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's, that sounds like it's fun. But if you if you leave, like, last last year I was on tour with this artist named Kaz. Um, we had an after party in D.C. at this club called Rose Bar or something like that, which is kind of a famous club out there, too. Um, we didn't sleep. So nobody sleeps. So we was driving on the road. Everybody was driving off for 24 hours, being up for 24 hours. So, you know, those increments of driving was two hours. Like after two hours, somebody was tired. And then yeah. it's like, next dude, two hours. Or somebody, he tired now because he didn't really sleep for two hours. Then the next dude, he might be a little bit more gassed up because he got four hours because the, the, the prior two people drove for two hours. You know, it, it's really like, a, like you have to be on top of it. It's nothing easy at this level. You know what I'm saying? When you grind and you trying to hustle and, you know, I didn't, Eric didn't call me and say, hey, Garen, I want you to come on tour. I had to, I had to go search for Eric. I had to, I had to use, I had to use my politics and my relationships to get to Eric. My homeboy, Yay Ali, I used his, his line of, of attack to get to get to Eric's ears, uh, and, and to get to shout out to Neiman Johnson, who's Eric Bellinger, Bellinger's manager. I, I had so many avenues. He told me he's like, man, I felt like I got banged on by by your people's because you had like six different people hitting me up to make sure you was on this tour. Like I knew I was gonna put you on just because of how many people was hitting me, how many avenues you had trying to get in contact with me. So. You know, this is the grind, you know what I'm saying? In September, I told myself, yo, I, I want to be on this Eric Bellinger tour. The first week of November, I got approved. Mm -hmm. And we three weeks later, and I got to figure out the budget, figure out the routing, figure out the rooms, figure out the equipment, figure out my set. I still haven't even got my set in this tour starting a week and a half. I still haven't <laughs> on rehearsal yet, you know what I'm saying? Because life is so much of a... Uh, uh, a procedure that you can't just skip any steps. You gotta, you gotta take it step by step. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview, man. No, thank you for having me, bro. I really appreciate you. And with that, that'll wrap it up for this episode of the Anything Goes with Jackson Neal podcast. Make sure to go down into the show notes. There, I have links to Garen's music as well as to follow him on Instagram so you can keep up to date with him whenever he's coming to a city near you or he's dropping something new. Also, make sure to subscribe and rate to this podcast on your favorite platforms. New episodes every single Tuesday and Thursday, and those ratings really help the show grow. For more episodes of this podcast, as well as my other ones and the archived episodes, go over to jacksonneilpodcast.com. If you're a really big fan of the show, maybe consider becoming a subscriber over on Patreon. Over there for just a couple dollars a month, you can get access to cool bonus content from some of my interviews right here on Anything Goes. Sometimes in an interview, there's questions and stuff that I ask that don't make the full cut of the interview. So go over there to Patreon to check that out and see if that's something that you would be interested in signing up for. I write, record, produce, do everything for these podcasts myself as a full-time college student. So any little bit of support just really helps me spend more time making these episodes. If you want to stay up to date on everything I'm doing, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at JacksonNeil20. 
Today's music is by Analog by Nature with their song CDK Sunday. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you all next time.